Welcome, let us get started. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Uh, thank you for joining us for our speaker series in the Center for Social Impact and Innovation with Glasgow Caledonia New York College. I'm the director of the center and I'm delighted to introduce to you Dr. Madhu Akaria, who is senior lecturer in risk at finance at GCU London and program leader for GCU London's array of master's degrees in risk management. Dr. Akaria, obtained his PhD in Enterprise Risk Management from the University of Southampton and is a qualified chartered insurer with the Chartered Insurance Institute London and fellow of the Institute of Risk Management in London. Uh, Dr. Akaria has published widely with research focusing on enterprise risk management in both financial and non-financial sectors, including climate rich risk, which we are certainly experiencing in the United States right now in Texas. Uh, the aim of Dr. Akaria's research and teaching is to integrate the world of risk for academics and practitioners, and he is the winner of a prestigious Shin Research Excellence Award of the Geneva Association in Switzerland and the International Insurance Society in the United States. We're very much looking forward to your talk on how India could mitigate the impact of COVID-19. And to our guests in the audience, uh, you are encouraged to submit your questions by clicking on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. And I will present questions for discussion after uh, Dr. Akaria's presentation uh, concludes. Thank you so much. We're excited for your talk. Thank you, Reis. Um, uh, good afternoon, good morning, and uh, um, wh wherever you are in the world. So my talk is uh, based on the current research that I have been doing now uh, with uh, let's see, let's see. with one of my uh, ex colleagues and he's also working in uh, University of Sterling, Dr. John Hoiston. So you work together to produce this research work. Now, let's see. so as you can see on the screen. The title of this presentation today is a quantitative BRICS model and the solution to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 in India. So what we are trying uh, we do will the topics included in these uh, presentations, are, we talk a little bit uh, about the coronavirus, what is happening now, and many all of you uh, knows what is going on and what the impact we have in our daily life, in our uh, personal life, in our um, um, work and everywhere. Then I will go to the resource constraint decision making technique that we have used in this um, research. Thereafter, we, I'll go uh, to discuss the quantitative optimization model that I have, we, I have used in this um, uh, research. Then we'll, I will produce the results for a specific category on the um, on the on the application of COVID-19, which is public health. Thereafter, I will uh, ex um, uh, expand the economic recovery uh, process and uh, see that how our model could help. And finally, we'll I will draw the policy implications. So that is the topics we'll discuss today. Now, uh, is a brief summary, but all of you know that the impact of COVID-19 we have. So this is basically a very short summary. Until now, until today, the, we have 110 million cases all over the world. Death is 2.43 million, um, uh, sadly. And you can see some of the, the countries which are much more affected. Certainly, uh, we can see in the USA, so cases in case of cases and also in terms of death is 27.9 million cases and also the death is 490,000. Then you can see India, Brazil, UK and uh, Russia. These are the five most affected countries from COVID-19. So my next slides, um, we, uh, I will try to see how the COVID-19 crisis um, is uh, basically affecting us and also uh, uh, and in the for the uh, the policymaker levels. Now you can see from these slides 
uh, we divided the COVID-19 uh, implications in three time horizons. So we uh, divided these three, so first time horizons is one to 10 years. This is basically the implication of COVID-19. Then we have a medium term, which is two to five years. And then the long term is five years and above. In terms of the, um, the priority of the, the government's action in the uh, in respective time framework, shorter time, medium term, and the longer term, you can see the public health and the economic maintenance is one of the priority of the government. It's basically saving the citizens' life. It's the first, most topmost work for the policymakers. So instead of the policymakers, is basically the government of their respective countries. Then the medium term, which is economic recovery, which is the economic welfare, and the, the longer term, which is the social well-being, which is the welfare. So these are the three main tasks the policymakers are uh, dealing with. Now, you can see that these three um, main functions are overlapping. They are dynamic. So once you come the public health, then it arises for the economic recovery and also the social implications. So when it started in last year, the beginning of last year, we have COVID-19, the government focused on the public health for saving lives. Then the recovery, recovery come in. So COVID uh, for the sustainability of this country, of any particular country is not only dependent on the saving life of the people. There is implications, which is the measures the government takes, for example, lockdown, is one of the, the, the first measures or the most important measure, partial or full, which cut, uh, also cascaded down in many others, like uh, social distancing, for example, face masking, hand washing, and several other things like increased hospital capacity, and then uh, COVID-19, uh, COVID testing, of, uh, travel restrictions, and all the things they have taken at a primary stage has an implications on the economy of the country. So then economic recovery comes to the pictures. So over a time, like um, uh, if you say it goes one year and above, you can see that people are thinking about how, how could you survive with the COVID-19? We have to continue with that eco economic process, how it will to recover. So this is an uh, agenda of the government. And from the economic rec recovery level, like st um, economic stimulus packages, business risk and startup programs, job creations, public works, infrastructural development, and other things comes there. So the, the time passes, the government in, in, uh, in addition to this public health issue, they are taking measures to take care of the economy. But there is a gap uh, because the, 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 the productions, the, human, the labor productions uh, that contributes to the economy has been stopped. So the government is creating money, they're giving the packages, they're giving the stimulus to the economy so that the economy survive when there is a lockdown going on. And these two uh, initiatives from the government has a long-term effect, which is called the welfare, the social well-being. Social well uh, so sus uh, creating a sustainable, healthcare, healthier and happier society, for example, so mental, uh, mental health and other things, uh, people his physical health. And also, for example, if you see from the short term, which is lockdown, or when you say uh, increased hospital capacity and cancellation of non-COVID um, uh, patients is an important and is a huge impact in our society yeah, because some of the disease like, uh, for example, cancers, they are not getting treatment and others. So it has huge implications. So although, so why, why, what, what I'm trying to say here, the government cannot deal, the policymakers cannot deal only one situation. They need to have a multiple um, uh, dimensions of their actions and uh, come into the policy agenda. And it is a, is a dynamic. And also you can see the new variants come in and uh, the new uh, uh, political issues comes in and so on. So it makes the, the work of the government very uh, complex. So what is saying here is uh, 
It's called balancing act. So what you mean maybe is, is balancing act is balancing a risk and return. So it mean uh, it means that if the government focuses on the healthcare and reduce the risk here, then increasing the risk in the economy. They, they reduce the risk of economy and healthcare, and then they increase the risk of uh, uh, social well-being for longer term. So once they create a, a reduced risk, and then they create another risk in another area. So at the end of the day, it is a balancing act or it's a balancing game for the government. Now, how the government will uh, act with that? This is an important part of our research. So we'll try to see what, how we can model these, uh, the balancing act so that the government can come to an optimization position. So government will never be, um, if they focus only the public health, saving all public life, keeping lockdown for years and years, that could be good for the public uh, saving life, but that is not good for the economy. Now, if you uh, open this, uh, don't take public health as a too much, focus on the economy, because some country did, and then you can see you create a, another problem here, which is the people are dying. So what the government will policymakers do? So policymakers role is basically focusing on a balancing risk and return, what the decision they will take in a dynamic environment. So our research is in the academic area of decision-making in, uh, in the face of uncertainty. So that is the main focus of this and how the government policy can take decisions when they face uncertainty. And also it is another dimension which is called the crisis. So the, so the main theoretical understanding of this study is decision-making under uncertainty in a crisis situation. It's not a normal situation. So how the government will, how the government balancing the risks and return. And that is, uh, we try to uh, take a very um, silo focus, a very narrow focus, how we can model it. Okay, uh, what we'll, dem we'll demonstrate in this research, we, to, or we plan to model how the early decisions to fight the pandemic can significantly affect the medium and long-term ability to continue to mitigate the pandemic whilst also rebuilding the economy. So it is a maximization problem. So the policymakers, that is the government, is always constrained by the for, uh, financial resources available to them. So then we bring the concept of budget. So whatever the government decides, they have a constraint, which is constraint is be resource constraint, uh, infrastructural constraint, and also there is a constraint on the budget as well. So the government uh, have a, a budget, every government, they do not have any unlimited money. But uh, if you focus on saving lives, we cannot constrain the budget. But there is the real world, there is a budgetary constraint in all cases. And we'll try to see here how we can utilize this budget, budget by allocating the budget in a much more balancing way. Okay, so this is optimization problem. Now, so we can see from these slides is a resource constraint decision making. So what we're doing here is called culture, uh, cultural, we have a boundaries and cultural boundaries. We have here for uh, infrastructural boundaries, and also we have here economic boundaries. So these are the constraints we will model that. So you model the cultural, which is cultural awareness. We model the infrastructural, which is, for example, health facilities, populations, and you also can take on strain the economic income and budgetary allocation, so on. So the way we will do it, you can see from these uh, slides. So we have a budget there, we have a decision tool on optimi optimization model that we'll basically create. And we will use this, we we'll create this optim optimization model by called risk scoring. So we'll, we'll create a risk score for each of the decision government will take. And we'll see that the what, uh, the best way government can um, optimize the score, risk score. And then we uh, allocate it in short term, medium term, and the long term. Especially as, as I said earlier, is the public health, economic, and financial, and also social well because longer term, we, over that time. So that is the theoretical found, foundation of our work. To, uh, to uh, illustrate this model, we used a case study, which is uh, here, we took a country, which is India. Now, the question, why did you uh, take in India as a case study? Uh, there are several reasons behind it. So the first region is the, the huge country, 
which is population is 1.3 c 66 billion um, which is almost 17.7 percent of the world literacy rate is 74 percent and also we can see the huge difference between female and male literacy rate 65 female and 82 uh, we can see a few slides later is a very uh, diverse infrastructures in terms of your uh, uh, population in terms of age density um, each, uh, each, 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 each geographical location of this country, uh, gender, uh, and also health facilities, the hospital, so the remote areas, the, um, that is a, uh, some uh, uh, developed area has a good hospital uh, case or public, uh, public health facilities, some other remote areas don't have that. We also taken into consideration the doctors uh, per people and also utility facilities and the location from the capital. Then also we, uh, one of the reasons we take economic status of this country, uh, um, it is, uh, is uh, GDP per capita is growing, uh, going uh, highly growing. Also is GDP grows around 6.4% for last three, four years It's maintaining. So it is a huge, uh, huge GDP growth. And you can also see that uh, from, the, uh, from this table, you can see the, uh, the age, age level is due to 14 years age we have in average is 27.5 percent people between one uh, due to 14 15 to 64 age level we have 63.38 percent average for last uh, four years as above 65 is only 5.97 percent so you have to see that the young population is very very dominating in this country so this is the uh, case study um, we choose and this is the maps. Uh, basically, you can see the different parts of the. We can see the north on the on the top of that. You, know, you can see the west on the left side and uh, east on the right side, uh, and south on the bottom of part, part of that. So it's diverse, and the culture is very diverse. They have different languages, um, uh, uh, different cultures, different uh, heritage, and so on. Okay. Uh, so after that, we are going to now the uh, modeling part of it. Now, uh, as you see from the previous slides, we have uh, three types of models, um, three uh, main definite, uh, main areas of modeling, public health, economic and financial and social and For the simplicity, I will only focus in the area of public health. And also we are we still not finished yet, but we are now working, is ongoing process. And, um, we are now working to uh, model this economics and also social being separately and our next work will be combined them together. But for this purpose of this illustration in this uh, seminar, I will only focus in the area of public health. Now, um, in the public health area, so you can see this is the, the, the map of India. And uh, we collected our data a little bit old because we started this work sometimes in the, the beginning of uh, last days around February, March. And this is the data we produced in April 2020, uh, but we, we are still working on that. We are, we are observing it. Once we get the up-to-date data after the end of this year, we'll produce our final article. But that will not basically change the, the methodology clear. So our main purpose of this presentation is to show you the methodology we have used to, to make a quantitative optimization model. So from these uh, slides, you can see that uh, according to the data in 28th of April 2020, so the number of deaths, the number of deaths has gone up now, um, uh, obviously by, by yes, nearly one year. But during that time, we found that Maharashtra, which is basically in the that part, uh, we can see here, which is mostly in the area of the west part of that, middle west part of this, Maharashtra had the highest death during that time in 2020, uh, in the death of death count. Delhi has the highest death rate, which has changed obviously now. Uh, during that time when we did the modeling and also the seven uh, states or the or, or the UTs, uh, unitary territories, uh, we had uh, not deported some of the dates of that. So it's a very initial stage of this. And we started modeling that based on this data, we start modeling. Now the risk factor we included in our model, which is the population, one of the risk factor. The second risk factor we took here, the health facilities. The third risk factor in our modeling is the economic status. The fourth risk factor education level. The fifth is infrastructures. And the fourth, the last one is budgetary constraints. These are the six risk factors we have. 
within the population risk factor, we took the population age group that I showed you, and we have subdivided it in many, many other parts. Population density, household density, and also the gender difference, and the living uh, location, urban and rural. So these are the five fact, sub factors we took under that population factor. For the second factor, health facility, we took three sub factors, which is the people per doctor, per state and UTs. Uh, and then we have square per, uh, per kilometer per public hospital. So public hospital per square kilometer, it is very, it's different from one state to another state. People per public hospital bed, we take number of beds in public hospital um, uh, uh, is also another factor. Thereafter, we have economic status like average uh, uh, GDP, uh, G, GDP per capita income of uh, each state. Then we have educational level. We took the literacy rate of each state. Infrastructures, we took the two factors like access to utility facilities, like, uh, for example, uh, public toilets and other areas. Uh, also, we took some of the, the electricity, for example. Uh, uh, um, uh, for, for the people is one of these uh, factors. We have taken another factors like distance from the country's um, uh, capital is Delhi. So how far are you are you in the Delhi? Uh, because we are our center, Delhi is the center of the capital of this country. So it means that if you are close to Delhi, that if Delhi is very much, very much affected, you, are, you have a high risk of affecting as well in, in a particular states of this country. Then we have a budgetary constraint. Within the budgetary constraint, um, we took the all public expenditure of this country. We call it as a PE. Uh, development expenditures as a percentage of total public expenditures of each state. Medical and public health uh, expenditures of each state. Education, sports, arts, and the cultural per capita uh, expenditures and also the expenditure for water supply and sanitations um, uh, per uh, development expenditure, uh, percent of development expenditure. So these are the data we, uh, we, col uh, we collected for our analysis. Now we can see this table, which is basically a summary uh, uh, of these average per capita expenditures. You can see here uh, is a key message coming from here is that uh, the spending priorities of different states, which externally uh, is extremely uneven. If you see here, for example, Arunachal Pradesh, which is here, um, uh, uh, which is Arunachal Pradesh, you can see um, sorry. Uh, uh, here, uh, Arunachal Pradesh, which is all public spending uh, um, uh, per rupees, which is uh, 80,152 uh, rupees per person. And if you compare with the Bihar, which is only 11,747. So, so Bihar is, uh, Arunachal Pradesh is almost seven times higher than the public expenditure from Bihar. So it, it, in, uh, uh, it illustrates that is a huge diversity in the one state to another state in terms of uh, public expenditures um, uh, in uh, in the area in, uh, in from 2007 to 2019. So as you see from the development expenditures, for example, if you see uh, Uttar Pradesh, which is the lowest 7,900, and if you see Arunachal Pradesh is 55,223 per, 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 per resident or per citizens. You can see the huge difference. If you see the medical and public health expenditure per, uh, per person, you can see the Bihar only expends 484 rupees per person. But where you can see the Arunachal Pradesh is also used only 7,848 rupees per person. So you can see the huge diversity of this country. Now, the question is that when there is a COVID-19, they will not discriminate between the people you are poor and you are rich. Okay, so it is a, a challenge for the government how they will allocate their budget. Should they allocate the budget to the poor countries or should they allocate the budget more to the richer countries? Or should they be, um, allocate a different way uh, of that? So that is the challenge for the government uh, has. Again, similarly, uh, the same story for uh, the average per capita expenditures 
for ex uh, education and sports and cultures and also the water supply and sanitations um, we have here you can see that only uh, that at um, uh, Telangana, which is only 2,273 per capita per person spent, but you can see the Goa, in ca case of education, they spend 13,450. So you mean that you can easily spend that Goa will be a much more educated um, state rather than uh, any any other state like a Telangana in 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 uh, in in india so it means that the awareness of covid 19 will be much more lower on those countries where the education is very low education um, expenditure is very low and but other countries as well so similarly we have water supply and sanitation is an important part of the covid 19 issues which is only you can see the telling uh, telangana which is only 58 rupees they spent on water supply and uh, sanitation and you can see that the goa has been only uh, was been more 4571 so you can you can see the difference and in all india average is 366 67 in terms of water in terms of expenditure in water supply and sanitation uh, and um, and uh, and it is nowhere near to the in goa uh, similarly you can see the monipur is in the median all india average is 450 so is nowhere near from the goa so you, pay, you can see the huge diversity of in, in terms of expenditures of dif, uh, different uh, areas. So uh, that is a challenge from the government when the COVID-19 um, stuck. The COVID-19 came and does not discriminate. You are poor, educated. It does not discriminate where you are in India um, uh, and, uh, and so, several other things. And where you have a rich culture, you have a, you have a not a rich culture and so on. So there's a government and how the government will, uh, will take a decision in that crisis time. Now, here is the model assumptions we have. So what is the assumptions, our model? So as we mentioned, we have a risk factor of different four categories we have um, basically showing here. And um, uh, we have made some assumptions. So every, you know that every model has assumptions, uh, our model has assumption as well. And uh, um, practically speaking, if the assumptions are not met, then our model will give you, will give you wrong results. So first condition is that the assumption need to be described very well. So I just give you a couple of assumptions we have. For example, we have a risk factor which is a percentage of population um, for which 60 or, or 60 or older. It means that older population more susceptible to catching uh, uh, or f falling to COVID-19. So that is the universal, uh, yeah. so if you have more population in your, in your state, that means you have a more death rate. So that is the assumption we made. It it might be different um, uh, situations, uh, but realistically, but that is the assumption with the best guess we made there. For example, literacy rate, we made an assumption, less literate population, less likely to respond as required to the information impacted by the public education. So if you have a education level is low, you don't have a, uh, not awareness of that, as you see different parts of the, of the world as well, you are less, um, uh, aware of the COVID, and you are you are taking less precaution. You are getting higher risks of COVID. Then, uh, population density is a big issue. You have a more dense area. That means you have a high, a high, um, high you have a high um, um, probability of catching um, get COVID of that. So that's uh, you know. So the UK government, for example, uh, different the similar study. You have a high population, then they take a different study from there. So that is basically here in any other parts of the world as well. Um, and also, uh, we have a male. Uh, males appear to be more uh, suspect, um, more affected than the females. Okay, so that is we can see from the other data as well. So these are the assumptions we made based on the, um, the standards we have seen in any other parts of the world, ex world as well. So again, with the gravity with Delhi, it means that if we are close to the country uh, center, which is basically the city, uh, the, um, the, uh, the center of this country or, uh, or the capital of this country, you, uh, the, these states are very close to the, the Delhi, we'll probably get more COVID-19 cases there. Um, so these are the assumptions uh, that we have made, uh, all of these factors. Then how the modeling works. So we use a six step model the first step, we assign the risk score to each state of 12 risk factor. The risk factor I mentioned earlier, we gave the score of each state, it's called before mitigation, so pre-mitigations. Like, like a population, if a high population, will give a high risk score. That means high risk score means that high risk. Okay. If you have a uh, health facility, um, a poor facility, we give you a high risk score. All right. 
and economic status and so on. Then we, um, after giving the score of each state before mitigation, we classify each uh, states into a set of predefined risk categories. So then after then we, that, okay, this state goes this category and this state goes this, I'll give you this category in a minute. Then we, uh, the, the third steps, we apply the predefined mitigation tools and each of these. So we basically then apply these rules in our modeling. And then we have run the models with three strategies. I will show you the strategies in my next few slides. We use three scenarios and I, uh, we apply this uh, model in three different scenarios. And after then, uh, we uh, we noting the changes. Uh, we, when we have applied this model with each scenario, I said, okay, first scenario, how the score changes uh, that means that um, uh, of, uh, of your mitigation is taken, how you risk, risk changes after the mitigation. So we change the, uh, the difference of this uh, change of scores of each category, each states. Then finally, we choice of decision making. We give the, the policy makers a choice that what they will do. So we have alternative results of alternative scenarios. Now it is decisions what you will do now. Okay. So basically, it is a much more scientific uh, process. We will produce the scientific result based on the data. And then the decision maker, maybe the government, which has some political uh, involvement, um, they take political issues and many other factors, and they will basically decide which is best for the country by taking three different uh, environments like short term, medium, and long term, and they will decide the decisions. So our role is very much produce scientific results for them. Now, First, as the first results, we provide the uh, the risk scores for uh, table for uh, people per, uh, per doctor. This is one of the scores. For example, if there are um, only one doctor per zero to 2,400 uh, uh, so that means 2,500 people, zero to uh, zero to 2,500 people, we will give them a score 10, right? So as your uh, proportion of the number of uh, people one doctor is um, taking care of, that means that the doctors will be over um, the burden and your risk score goes up. So basically, if you start with risk score 10, which if you have a 2,500 um, the people per doctor and risk score 10, if you have a um, uh, 28,000 is the last one, 28,000 and over uh, people per doctor, then per person doctor, then your risk score goes down to from uh, uh, until 15,000. So we provide a risk score from 10 to 15,000, depending on the, um, the the riskiness of each state, um, uh, based on the number of people uh, attached to per doctor. So the higher the risk, the higher the score. Okay. Now uh, we have used the classification level. So if your risk code is 0 to 2000, 1999, then we call it as a moderate serious. So by, by giving the risk factor of each risk um, category, and we then provide the, um, the level of risk of each state. So if your score, if one score is 0 to 1999, then we give as a moderate, moderately serious. If your score of each state is 2,000 to 7,000, we'll give it a serious. Then we call it basically, you can see is the yellow. So we'll, uh, um, if you see the green, which is much more moderate, uh, moderate risk, serious risk, next level of moderate risk, which is basically serious risk. If your score is 7,000 to 12,000, we'll give you, we call you as a, very serious risk, and then 12,000 and above, we call you as the extremely serious risk. So if your score is on the top, which you are the moderate serious, we'll basically call it the low, low risk, and you are extremely serious, we call it as a high risk. So that way, way we, we put a risk class. So we teach the, each uh, state, we put them in risk class, which is risk class moderate, serious, very serious, and extremely serious. Now, we created basically three scenarios. Sometimes we call it alternatives or the strategies, whatever we call it. It's the three scenarios. Uh, note that we have budget. So the government has a budget. And government's role is to allocate the budgets in such a way that they control the COVID-19 uh, infections and death in that country. 
So they need to allocate this budget. So based on this budget, the local uh, states will take a decision how they will manage it, COVID-19 at the local level. So here, the government starts with the funding. So government has a pot of money, and then they have one scenario. The first scenario is states or um, states take the lead. Okay, so the government say, okay, I have a money of that. You have your own budget, but I will give some extra money. Now you control your control your risks. Okay, and I will provide you the risks class, where you risk class you fall now. But I want to see at the end of the, the results after allocating this budget, after using these budgets in different classes, a different category, different areas. I will check one month later or 15 days later what is your risk or risk score gone down. What is the risk level now? Is your risk score gone up or gone down? So one scenario, government have a money, they give some uh, money to the uh, to the states, and the states have their own budget, and they use this money, government money, and then allocate this budget to reduce the COVID-19. So the budget can be allocated in different parts as the risk factors we showed here. Now within this, there are uh, three scenarios for the first one, so three sub-scenarios. So the first sub-scenario is look like this. So first sub-scenario is saying that uh, equal per capita. So how much uh, um, how much uh, money you will get is based on, I will give you how much per capita you have in your state, okay? So basically equal allocation to all states whether poor or rich. So I will not take a discrimination of that. I will poor capita. So every citizen in India has a portion of money, same portion of money, doesn't matter which um, state they belong it, whether the rich or the poor. So that is equal uh, allocation of all the states. Um, there's a government money. The government putting a money there. Within this one, government said, okay, no, I will not give you the money based on equal per capita. I will give you the money if your um, uh, ranking of your state's GDP. So if your GDP is um, uh, is uh, 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 bit, is poor, then I will give you uh, um, uh, will, uh, a fund, which is uh, poor funds, poor state will get more fund and the rich state will get less fund. So it's basically poor state is better off than they themselves would be happy, um, uh, they would have been. One. So instead of giving you equal money, I will give you for a poor state more money and the rich state less money because uh, there's another. Then the rich state said, no, so what, what, you do, what are you doing? I am the rich state. I contribute GDP to your country, in your central, uh, I'm the, and I should get more money of that. So that is a debate. Uh, that's it. The government has an, another alternative. And the third alternative, government will say here, okay, is risk status. Because we have a, I have cal uh, calculated your risk each states based on what you have now. So I will give you high risk states, will give you more money, and the less risk state will give you, we, I will give you less, uh, less money. So that is the three uh, sub scenario I created from the first scenario. Then we have a second scenario, which is called the uh, central government leaves. Central government will say, no, I'll not give you the power. I'll not give you the money. I have money. I will, you will contribute me on the money. Then I will take control of your, uh, of your COVID-19. I'll take control of COVID-19 with other states in the country. So the government is a central government control, but the government will uh, have a money and government will uh, take money from the states based on, for example, their um, different criteria. Then the third option, government will say, okay, uh, I will take the control, right? I will take your money, right, money, but it, that's not enough. I will add more and more money. So basically, government will say, okay, I will print money, or I will borrow money for other countries, and I will give you a lot of compensation scheme, a lot of stimulus, does not matter. You need, well, I need to take control of this COVID-19. Money is not a matter at all. So money supply is unlimited now, but um, I will take control of it. So in that case, the government is borrowing, borrowing, and borrowing, right? Uh, uh, and also printing money, printing money, money is not a matter. So these are the third scenarios. We have three scenarios of this, and this is the choice for the government. Now, what is our job here is based on the data we collected, we'll, show, we'll demonstrate that which um, uh, scenario produce which results. Okay? So that is our job. But at the end of the day, the government will decide what they will do. So that is basically the scenarios I described here. 
um, now uh, is a 28 stage at UTS and we uh, in a one pictorial form and we take, for example, the population, uh, population density, these are the all factors, the way government will take and a state will take to allocate money and spend their money. Now, uh, what you have seen here now, uh, before mitigation. So these are the uh, results we have produced uh, from our analysis. So before taking any actions, these you can see the scores we provided to, uh, by uh, the score we provided before mitigation, what the states look like. So they are called four uh, risk class, moderately serious, serious, and very serious, and extremely serious. The number of the states we have here, 24 states are uh, serious before the mitigation, taking any actions, budgetary actions the government had. Very serious are seven, and also extremely serious are five, right? So uh, uh, it means that you can see here, uh, the red zones, which are extremely serious. Uh, we can see here Rajasthan, for example, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, these are extremely serious before taking any um, uh, measures, precautionary measures. Some states are um, uh, moderate, uh, moderate, you do not find moderate, uh, but see some states are maybe moderate, but it's not showing um, in the picture, uh, uh, maybe it is small because there is 0%, but it's nearly zero. Uh, Sirius is 24 of them. You can see somewhere here, here, Karnataka uh, and others. Um, you have Assam, Jammu. Uh, one of the reasons it could be that it is not very close to the, uh, to the center, to the capital of this country. You see the capital of this country, which is there, they are very close, they are very much um, extremely serious. And also we took all these factors that we have taken data on that. It is, so it is the primary state before allocating the budget. Now, this slide is basically showing uh, Ut uh, Uttar Pradesh, you can see here, uh, it's called the risk score compositions of that. So in, if you are close to uh, Delhi, if you uh, uh, if you get uh, close to the it's called 1500 is, is score we, we got here. Um, for example, health score is we have uh, 15,000, which is basically the Maharashtra. So we can see some uh, in our analysis called uh, Maharashtra. You can see that health is very very dangerous in this area. So it is uh, health health in health level. We get a red that is very serious. So if you see, for example, Bihar, you can see uh, the category we have here, like general infrastructures, household density, which is this area, and so on. They are getting also uh, the health score is very serious. But if you see the Uttar Pradesh health score uh, is not serious in this area. But if you see in the uh, Maharashtra, it's very, very affected. So it is all before the uh, mitigation uh, happens. Then we applied all these mitigations. Then we apply our uh, techniques of that. So what we did in our uh, analysis, uh, in our modeling, uh, we took this like, uh, we took the 10%, the model one, which is basically uh, the state manage the risks, government provide a fund. So uh, there's 10% of the state GDP, I'll provide 10% of the state GDP to you, the amount of your GDP produced as a part of my, uh, my, my contribution. Right, um, and the central government uh, um, adds another 200 billion from it funds, and then well, we have different scenarios look like what does it look like of that. So we have done model one, model two, and model three. So we can see that the model one C, which is basically you can see that the and so the uh, the local government takes actions, right? So pre mitigations of it, uh, which is based on risk category basis, so the government will give money. Uh, poor state, high risk score will high risk uh, states will get more money. Less risk score, less uh, will get uh, less money. So you can see this is a pre mitigation and after mitigation. So after that uh, scenario one, which is one C, if you see here where this is the rate, and you can see some of these there was no moderate. Uh, sorry, uh, 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 no state was. Uh, basically moderate serious before, but after taking this strategy, we have some states like Pond uh, Pondicherry, for example, we, we have here, we um, somewhere here, which is getting, or Goa, for example, which are getting good after government actions. Even then the government says, I will get more money to the uh, more risky areas. So some little bit contribution to the government and the local con uh, state contribution makes the big difference for this. And, and the overall, this is the status. So we can see that 
pre-mitigation and post-mitigation. So uh, after this, extremely serious becoming much more uh, risk category very serious. Serious level get moderate and also so risk um, uh, mitigation after mitigation, the risk score has gone down and it is better off. So we are comparing basically pre-mitigation after the first one scenario that I'm showing the picture. Now the second model we showed the government will take all all the things, right? He said, okay, state do not have to do anything. Uh, give your contribution to me, and then I have my fund, and I will manage everything. So uh, it is centrally controlled by the government. In that case, you you can see that you have uh, Himachal Pradesh, which was in serious, it was moderate, moderately serious, and you have extremely serious, which is one area Maharashtra has become very serious now, which is uh, improved. So you can see from this figure before mid, uh, model 1C, uh, it is better off. If you take the model 2, which is government take the control and use their money, which is uh, better off this country. So rather than giving the states a control of the government takes control of it and uh, use this fund and use um, all this analysis of that, it is better off. Then uh, model 3, which is the final model, government has taken full control, government his own fund, uh, then government take the fund from the states based on their contributions, and then government started printing money. Uh, so government says money is not a matter, I need to take control of the, um, of the COVID-19. So in that case, you can see here, uh, even it is unlimited budget, which is basically uh, no money problem. And you can see even there are some areas uh, we can see in this part of that, even then he cannot reduce the whole uh, risk. Even there are some extreme risk areas as well. So it, it indicates that if money is not a problem at all, he cannot avoid. So there will be some areas, so you can get the, the green one, there are a lot of improvement happens. Um, you can see most of the green, some green, some yellow, amber, but the, all of the reduce like Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, you cannot reduce at that level. So it's a maximization problem. They will still exist because there is the infrastructural problem of it. So because of this infrastructural problem you have, government has nothing to do. Right? They have to carry this. We call it as a basic risk, for example. So we have to carry the risk anyway. Right? So that is called optimization, uh, optimization result we have got here. Now, these are the scenarios we can see that. Now, it is the government decisions what they will take. So they took scenario one, scenario two, scenario three. Right? Uh, but even then, they, uh, they, they have a scenario three. They have unlimited money, but it is only public health. I didn't, we did not show you here what will be the consequences look like in economy, what will be the consequences look like in the longer term in the, uh, in the social factors like uh, mental health and other things. So we are now doing this work. We are waiting for the full data, full set of data and will the pro produce, okay, if you do only in the public sector, uh, public life that you will get that one. If you, now we combine it with the economic recovery, what you what will look like. And if you now do the, long term a social factor as well what you look like so what we're expecting uh, now the pre uh, result model you will not get this sort of situation and there will be some more red, red areas in different parts of that will be the increase of that when you take up this so basically go based on that um, uh, the modeling you, uh, it, the, the risks will be uh, exist there will be no uh, zero risks at all Okay. So that is the next part of our work, how we can uh, model the economic recovery, also the social, social and uh, we can combine them and see that what will the model look like. And we'll, we'll still collecting our data. And uh, once open it, we see that we have a sufficient data and, and dynamism of this is little bit uh, gone normal. And then we'll start modeling it again. Okay. So um, what is takeaway, uh, key takeaway for this um, research we have? We have construction of an applications of an optimization model that uh, we have created. So it's basically demonstrated a construction of and the application of an optimization model using COVID-19 incident um, as to manage the crisis. And also, we also demonstrated that alternative methods of allocating funds, that was the budget and the funds, resulted in different risk outcomes. That means risk class in colors as you see that. Now in future, what we'll do, we'll integrate the public health and economic scoring models. And you see that what is the holistic model look like. And also we'll see that 
the, the method of funding allocation, we will try, we will gather more method of public allocations uh, that we can create more and more scenarios. And also, uh, we will see that if we take as a time is a factor, so if you take early decision making that and then that will basically make a huge difference for longer time. So you should not wait for um, the COVID is coming in uh, and what will the implication look like and wait and see. You have to take an interview the result. As soon as you take the uh, take action of that, you will get more and more um, results in future. So that's the conclusions of our study. So it creates a big debate uh, from the policy making. So the government has a limited budget. It debates in economic area. It uh, creates a debate. The government should uh, creating money. How is longer effect it should be in the, the long run? So you can see that if you state if the model, the last model you showed, if you start getting uh, printing money, uh, your risk will be still there. It cannot mitigate. So at some point of the state, that will be maximum point you can reach. So where the government will stop? That is a fundamental decision the government has to take. Okay, I start printing money, I'm borrowing money, but it need to stop somewhere. We will see that when you integrate the second and third uh, long, uh, uh, medium term and longer term in our model. And also there is a debate here that should the government uh, focus uh, the political issues first, or should the government focus on the scientific evidence? Um, uh, so, so that is there and how the combination made. So that is one debate. Within the crisis time, government should take into consideration the scientific community advice that, okay, uh, these are the results I'm getting from there. Just follow me and you will get a result, get, 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 get the control of that. But government decision, decision, okay, let's wait and see. Let's scientific scientists do their work and let's do, uh, do our work then because we maintain, we, need, we are the public, uh, maintain the public, um, uh, public sentiment. Uh, so we will listen uh, to the uh, the scientists, but uh, we will let we will wait and see. Uh, but the scientists said, okay, no, we should not wait and see. You act now based on what we are seeing now. So it is a modeling work. The modeling shows, and then you should act accordingly. So that is a big debate. Is policy debates comes there between two different perspectives, which is basically decision making and also it is economic recovery. Thank you very much. So that's the end of our presentation, and I'm happy to take your questions to improve our um uh, research ongoing research work thank you thank you so much dr akaria for for bringing us inside the the complexity of the the risk factors and and also uh showing us what it is to construct a, a model in 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 such careful detail uh, uh two of the questions from from our colleagues um uh, dr akaria referred to the basically translating your modeling and descriptive account to um, more of a prescriptive uh, set of uh, insights. And so uh, Adrian uh, Studer, who is uh, of course risk management with us in, uh, in New York, uh, points out and, and agrees that there are indeed these fundamental challenges that magnify the, uh, the negative impact from, from COVID, the, the, these disparities that you accounted for, and, and wonders whether you see that these measures related to COVID uh, actually provide an opportunity to the central government to try to equalize disparities among the states, or instead, do you just see it as, as uh, adding complexity that um, will will further tear apart and, and increase the inequalities among these states? Yes, uh, I think that's a very good question. Thank you. Um, I think there's a policy debate. Now, the government, because our model is only focusing in the crisis area. So why, why, how did the government take decision during the crisis? But this crisis is basically showing you the fundamental uh, infrastructural problem you have. So this is an example. This is a test case. So you can see that in if you do this even um, uh, borrowing money, printing money, money is not a matter. You still have risks. It indicates that you have to focus on the infrastructure of this problem. So you have to go to the root. So COVID-19 is a test on that. It indicates you where you is your main problem, right? So if you should only, uh, your policy only allows to the rich state going rich and rich and rich, and the poor state going poor and poor and poor, you can see that much more disparity in the future. So you can see that the red areas in the third model issue is going up and up and up. And you can see that, if the one area is green, but rich area, sorry, the poor areas is good. So that is the government decisions and government now think, okay, COVID-19 gives, gives us a lesson. It shows us very um, categorically with very um, 
point, why my um, the uh, what is my problem? What is the infrastructure problem of this country? It's not in India. It could be any part of the world. So I need to focus. I need to uh, uh, take a policy decisions how I will uh, take the poor state like Bihar to be a, um, equal to, uh, compared to uh, to other states. Also, how do I bring this equality? Right. So that is the inequality there. I need to maintain the uh, bring equality. It's not equal, but equality. How to improve that situation? Yes. So it is a long term process. It's not only one year. But COVID nineteen give you indicate you where to focus. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, uh, the the chair of our board here in, in New York, Gordon Jack, uh, points out the the challenge for government finances and budgeting. Indeed, this crisis depletes uh, government budgets and finances. On the other hand. Um, that instinct to try to replenish reserves may be counterproductive. And uh, he wonders if you have thoughts about how the cost of the pandemics and of the recovery might be spread across the generational divide uh, in, in, the, in the population. Uh, yes, that's a good question again. So we are now working for the second part, which is basically the economic part. And probably we'll see some results from there. So uh, now the government is busy with their uh, to, to overcoming the COVID-19 challenges. So this is finance is not an issue. So that's what you can see the, the rich countries in the world, including USA, UK, and other European countries, the debt level is going high and high and high. Now that is a, a, a optimization point. You cannot borrow the debt uh, forever. So basically if you borrow the debt for uh, you were borrowing and borrowing and borrowing forever, you are not incre increasing your COVID-19 performance. So there is still the risk. Now, where, where is the risk appetite? Where should you stop? Uh, it is a very, um, it's huge work. It's not basically, uh, our small work is not basically focusing on that. But what we are trying to see is, is that borrowing is an option, but it is not a, it is a limitation as well. So. So while you will focusing on the, uh, for, for a longer term is probably our next work when we model the second pillar of our work and then include the second pillar with the third pillar and you see that how it affects the society, both economic and also in the, um, the social welfare term. So I think we are working on that, but we are not at that stage now. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much. On behalf of all of us attending and all of us in New York, we, we are really grateful for, for your time and expertise. And I'm sure all of us are wondering how the government of India might have uh, uh, responded more adeptly with your insights from the beginning. But in any case, uh, we look forward to hearing about your, your interaction with policy going forward. And thank you again for your time. Thank you very much. And thank you for the audience as well. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.